In this video, I'll be introducing the MICA Toolbox version 2 along with the QCPA framework. Visual signals vary hugely in nature and they can be critical to the evolution, the behavior, and the survival of different species. Typically, as scientists, we tend to have analyzed color and pattern independently. But we know that actually the receiver's visual system will be combining aspects of the chromatic parts, that's the color, the achromatic, that's the luminance or brightness, and the spatial, that's the what we might think of as pattern. They'll combine them together as one. And so that's ideally how we should be analyzing these signals. So we have developed the quantitative color and pattern analysis framework, which allows you to do just that, combine these all in one seamless workflow. I'll start with a brief overview of the toolbox and framework functions. First, the toolbox allows you to acquire calibrated digital images. You can use almost any digital camera to acquire these images. The caveat here being that if you wish to model ultraviolet sensitivity in your receiver, you'll need a camera that is sensitive to both the, the human visible and the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Next, these calibrated images need to be converted into cone catch quanta. So this step of visual modeling allows you to take the calibrated image and convert it to the color vision of your receiver. Next, the QCPA framework allows you to apply spatial acuity modeling. So there are different methods for doing this, whether in the, the frequency domain or the spatial domain. This takes away information that wouldn't be visible to a given receiver at a given distance, given their acuity. Next, we provide tools for reducing the noise and reconstructing edges following spatial acuity modeling. And finally, we provide different methods for segmenting the images. And image segmentation is required for a range of image analysis techniques, anything where you need to compare one color to every other color in the scene becomes impractical when you have millions of different pixels with independent colors. So by using segmentation, we can break the image down into a usable number of colors and use these different image analysis techniques. A huge range of different image analysis techniques are then provided, whether looking at the intensity of boundaries, chromatic and achromatic, looking at the, the shape and distribution of different colors uh, and different color complexity measurements. And finally, the framework provides different visualization tools. For example, creating color maps and looking at the degree of overlap between any two colors. Uh, and also creating opponency images and heat maps of saturation. The QCPA framework is therefore a hugely comprehensive and complex image analysis technique that can offer huge flexibility in the different visual modeling steps that you apply and the image analysis techniques that you use. Next I'll highlight some of the new features of the toolbox version 2. The first one is the ability to create your own linearization models. Previously, you had to use raw images only. And raw images are still ideal because they are the best way of preserving linear information, where a pixel value that's twice as high implies the sensor was recording a radiance value that was twice as high. But for various reasons, we don't always all have access to raw images. Maybe we want to use um, a cheap smartphone. Maybe we are analyzing frames from a video sequence. Uh, we don't always have these raw linear data available. So all we need to do is take a picture of, for example, a color chart with gray values of known reflectance, and then the toolbox can be used to make a linearization model. Another major addition is the ability to create cone catch models using color charts only. Previously, we had to know the spectral sensitivities of the camera in order to be able to map across to animal vision. But where we don't have the spectral sensitivities of the camera, it is now possible simply to use the color chart, as long as the reflectance of the patches in the color chart have been measured incredibly accurately. This technique is also slightly more difficult to use with ultraviolet sensitive systems. Uh, although possible, it's still probably best to ma map the spectral sensitivities of your camera uh, for ultraviolet. Next, I'll just give a little more detail on some of the vision modeling steps. First is the ability to apply acuity control. This is made really easy by the toolbox and framework. All you need to do is draw a, a line along a ruler in your image, specify the acuity of the receiver and the distance from which it's being viewed. And then the 
Acuity Control will take away all of the information that won't be visible to that receiver at that distance. It can do this using two different methods, either using Fast Fourier Transform and the Acuity View method. Uh, that requires square images. Or you can use the Gaussian convolution method, so filtering in the spatial domain. And the advantage of that is it lets you select a region of interest that might be any shape, and it can do the filtering completely independently of its background. The acuity control creates a blurred image such as this. So although it's stripped away the spatial information that wouldn't be visible to the receiver, it's created these blurred edges. And this is not what uh, a, a given visual system would be perceiving. It would be perceiving this petal as having a sharp edge against its background. These intermediate pixel values created on edges are also highly problematic for investigating the intensity of boundaries um, or clustering images where the clustering would be confused by so many intermediate pixel values. So we've developed a method for reconstructing sharp edges and also reducing noise in the image. And this is called the RNL ranked filter. RNL stands for receptor noise limited and that is the color space that is used throughout the entire QCPA framework. It's a perceptually uniform color space that's been quite well tested in a range of animals. The ranked filter is then used to reconstruct these sharp edges uh, for later processing. This example shows how easy it is to perform uh, an acuity-based analysis, uh, modeling the acuity of different receivers at, the, at a given distance. So here, for example, we have the original image, and we can model how that will look to a wedge-tailed eagle at two meters away. And the wedge-tailed eagle has uh, an acuity of about 140 cycles per degree, the, the highest of any known animal. And so here you can see it can see almost all of the detail going on in the flower. Uh, then a human standing at the same distance would still be able to see a lot of that information. The human with a, um, a spatial acuity of about 72 cycles per degree. And then finally, a house sparrow with a far lower uh, level of spatial acuity. Uh, to the sparrow, the entire flower would just be uh, a few colors, the, the center versus the surround. Next, the image needs to be broken down into a manageable number of distinct colors in order to apply some of the image analysis techniques. To do this, we've developed the receptor noise limited agglomerative hierarchical clustering method, or RNL clustering for short. This method allows you to break the image down with only knowledge of uh, the, the cone ratios of your receiver's visual system. So unlike other methods, uh, for example, k-means clustering, you don't need to know how many different colors you expect to have in your image. And importantly, it uses uh, visual modeling uh, to look at chromatic and achromatic color and luminance uh, detection thresholds uh, when breaking down the image. Once the image has been broken down into a discrete number of, of colors, you can use the particle analysis to look at the, the shape and distribution of the different colors. The adjacency analysis takes a clustered image and looks at the number of instances where a given pixel touches uh, another pixel of the same color class or a different color class. It compares transects in horizontal and vertical sections across the image and builds up matrices of same versus different colors, looking at how often each color is adjacent to every other color. And it can use this to create uh, useful statistics about the diversity uh, of colors and the complexity of colors in the image. The QCPA framework provides different methods for looking at boundary strengths. For example, the boundary strength analysis or this local edge intensity analysis. Conceptually, they're very similar, but the, the local edge intensity analysis here, it can be used on unclustered images, uh, which is very beneficial because all you need to do is a, uh, account for the acuity of the receiver before using this method. The local edge intensity analysis is, you can think of it as a, an edge map of chromatic edges uh, and achromatic edges in the image. But these edges, they tend to create a very skewed distribution. There are very few very sharp edges where most of the scene actually has very low values. So in order to deal with the skewed distribution, we provide metrics such as the skew and kurtosis of the output. And these should be interesting measures uh, which show you something about the, the salience and the randomness of, of edges in your scene. 
Overall, the QCPA framework provides a huge range of different parameters that are measured from every image. There's currently over 180 different parameters that are, that are output if you select all the options. So this is a huge and bewildering number. We want, though, to provide the community with the ability to measure pretty much anything they want um, with an aim to ultimately providing behavioral validation so that we can work out which of these measures is best supported by the behavior, by the evolutionary mechanisms that we're all measuring. So by providing as many different metrics as possible, we hope that um, uh, you'll be able to take these on uh, and inform us as to which are the most powerful, uh, which will then tell us something about how the visual systems work and how, uh, in turn, uh, these visual signals will evolve. An important feature that we've built into the QCPA framework is the ability for complete background independence. That means that, for example, you could measure any any part of an image, measure it completely independently of its surroundings. So here, for example, this moth can be measured um, at different distances completely independently of its green leaf surroundings. Here, for example, at two meters is the spatial acuity control, and then the edge reconstruction, and then the clustering. And by the time you get to 16 meters, most of these clusters would be perceptually the same so the, the entire moth is broken down into just two or three colors. This background independence could be really important, for example, because you're photographing museum specimens. So the background of the drawer in the museum is obviously not ecologically relevant, uh, and it might vary between samples, and you don't want to let that affect your image analysis. Uh, in other cases, you might want to compare between samples independently of the background. But often it will actually make sense to analyze the entire scene uh, and analyze animals against their natural backgrounds because they will interact with their backgrounds and the background will affect different aspects of its pattern and the way its colors are perceived to blend with its background. So either way, the, the QCPA framework has complete support for background independence or whole scene analysis. The framework also supports the ability to use other components of the micro toolbox. So for example, uh, you can use edge disruption and you can create, for example, RNL chromaticity space images and then measure the edge disruption of those. So that would be effectively looking at chromatic edge disruption, uh, which could be a useful additional tool in many situations. Finally, we've built this website, empiricalimaging.com, which we hope will create a, an online community with support, with lots of user guides, with detailed descriptions of the different tools and how to use them, and also a forum that you can use if you have any questions that aren't answered by the user guides. You can also download everything, including sample data here. So hopefully I've persuaded you that this is a, a useful framework uh, to, to use for your studies. and. Um, I'd like to thank all of our funders and my co-authors for all their help with developing this.